Hi again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And in today's video, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to produce this really beautiful dolphin painting. But as always with my channel, it's all about those top tips. So today we're gonna to show you a couple of tricks on how to produce the moon painting really effectively. And then I'm just gonna show you some, again, really basic but very simple and effective tricks when it comes to using a sponge and how effectively you can blend paint with those. So the colours wise today guys we're just literally going with the cool red, the cool blue, uh, we've got a bit of black and obviously our titanium white. Very simple 35mm painter's brush and of course the sponge and then the paper plate to create the moon. Now with all my paintings you need to obviously put the gesso on to prime the canvas initially. I don't actually buy gesso, I like to make my own version up, of which I'll leave a link below where you can actually come up with some basic ingredients. I just find this way it saves an awful lot of money. There's many different ways you can make this guys, you can literally use just uh, PVA glue and a bit of water. Uh, I've even used primer paint but it has to be the cheapest one you can get because it's actually a lot more fluid and a lot more looser. You don't want this to be too thick because you'll end up with little bumps on the canvas itself. Now the reason it's so important other than having the paint, uh, I mean the whole point of putting gesso in is you don't want the paint to permeate the canvas too quickly because it's just going to be too dry. But as you can see here, it's actually going to act as a glue so that I can then stick the paper plate onto the canvas. So I'm going to go straight on with the sponge to start with. Sponges are just fantastic when it comes to blending paints really effectively and quickly. So I'm just going to pre-mix a lovely purple using the cool red and the, uh, sorry I said the cool blue earlier, it's the warmer blue of course to make that nice purple colour. The key to this painting it's all about subtlety so I'm barely touching the canvas, I'm just titivating the edges because I really want to get some very subtle blending going on with the sponge. You have to be quite careful when you do your sponges because if you push down too hard, you can end up with quite a sort of mushy, hard colour. And I really just want to sort of subtly just blend those through. Now this purple colour I've got just coming off the moon is going to give a, a hint of like a lovely radiant light. And then we're going to start working some of those purples in. So you can see how I've just scattered a few dots of the blue and now we're going to start really blending the two together. The other beauty with using sponges as well of course is that you can have so much control you can either use the flat edge like I'm doing here or you could just use the corner just to give yourself a little bit more control when it comes to a bit more fine detail. But I just find they're just wonderful for distributing paint really effectively whereas sometimes with brushes you get those individual bristles that come through uh, and it generally takes a lot longer as well so I just think it has a really lovely ergonomic quality to it so you can really control what you do with the paints. So I do want to try and keep that subtle purple in the middle so I'm just going to be careful that I don't over paint that almost pink, pinkish magenta colour so that as I go a little bit more bluer towards the edges now I want to make sure I've got that lovely glow. You'll also notice that I am holding onto this plate Although it has stuck down with the gesso, I'm just a little bit apprehensive that I don't want it to move. So I'm just going to put a bit more white on here so that it's going to enable us to really blend the colours through because it can obviously dry. It's quite warm in the studio today. So I'll find if I put some colours on in a moment, it is just going to go too harsh. For me, painting is all about contrast. It's all about composition. So I want to have a lovely quality of blue in the corners just to bring your eye into the centre of the moon in a moment and it just brings the whole painting together so you get a lovely contrast of all the different subtle blues going on but also to suggest that ocean painting that of course it's going to be. So just a little bit more white just again very subtle colours guys you don't want to be too harsh with any of these colours and you do want them all to just very gradually blend together. So the actual amount of paint I'm putting onto the sponge is minimal. So you can see here I've just used the edge and now I'm just going to blend those colours through. But I want to have quite a, a very subtle detail blending technique. I don't want it to be too painterly as I would call it. I want it to be very subtle with the, the colours that when they blend into the middle. So I'm just going to keep working those edges 
just getting that lovely round motion. And now the great thing as well with brushes is, is just the different ways you can use it. So just little circles like this really do help to so just very subtly blend the paint, particularly now as it's started to dry a little bit. Just gives me a little bit more control. If you are fighting the paint, um, usually it's because there's too much paint on the canvas. So you've got to be wary. If it's too dry, you're going to get what I call my crusty paint, where you can see there's little individual nasty bits of paint in the background, where it almost picks up the actual texture of the canvas. Obviously you don't want that, but if it's too wet, you're not going to be able to control this blending as well. So you want to just be wary in terms of how much gesso you put on in the background and then how much pigment you're actually putting onto the foreground to blend this through. Painting should never be a battle. It should always be soothing, enjoyment. Really is the ultimate therapy in my mind. So now we're just going to lift off the plate. You might need to touch up a little bit of the corners. Let's see how this looks. Ah, oh, pretty good. There's a couple of little areas that I'll touch up, but generally you can see how quickly that was in order of creating the moon. So now I'm just going to go on with the cooler blue. I'm just going to put a little hint of white um, and I just want to put some of that lovely shadow that you get on the moon's face. Just giving a hint because ultimately this is still the background, the actual foreground feature of the dolphin is going to go partially over this. So you don't need to worry too much about being a perfect accurate moon painting. It's just giving a suggestion of all those craters and all the different textures you get on the moon. What I don't want to do though is just have it grey. So at the moment I'm just sketching out where those areas need to be but I want there to be a hint of colour going through so I want this to be a little bit more purpley in a moment. So again very subtly just blending these colours in. I don't want it to be too harsh. So this is just my 10 millimeter round head brush that I'm using now. It's my go-to brush when I'm doing paintings like this. It's just a really diverse um, workhorse for me of, of paint brushes because it can do most things, but I wouldn't use that for fine detail, um, which you'll see me use a sort of much smaller brush in a moment. So you can see I'm just putting some of that extra color through because I don't want it to just appear gray. So just a little bit more blues going through to create that blue moon effect. So here's my fine detail brush, this is a 6mm round head. And now I'm just going to sketch out where I want my dolphin to sit. Painting's all about getting the composition right. So if, if I had started to work on the detail of the dolphin and I decided it was either too small or too big, it would be too difficult to change later on. So it's essential, you notice I'm not using pencils, I always sketch with paint. Plus, if I make a mistake, it's easier to sort of paint over the paint than it is to try and get rid of the pencil marks. But I'm just sketching out the actual basic shape that I want my dolphin to sit. And I want it to be so it's just crossing over the moon, but that I'm really covering the vast majority of the canvas as well. So now I'm going back to the larger brush again. This is back to my 10mm round head. So I'm just going to do the background colour now. So I'm going to have quite a deep purple just to get those darker tones. Once again, everything I do in terms of painting is all about layers, background to foreground. A lot of people wonder why, you know, for example, this part of the moon now that I've painted in earlier, I'm now painting over. I just find it easier to go that way. I just think it makes the painting more consistent. If I'd have actually painted the dolphin first, you always can tell, you can see where you're trying to get those marks to line up. I just think it's easy just to do the whole background, let it dry, and then obviously work your penguin detail over the top or whatever your foreground detail is, it's going to be. So because my background is still wet, so I'm trying to do this in real time for you guys, just to get an idea of, of the speed that these paintings do or how they go, you'll notice that that purple's gone a lot lighter than I'd originally planned, but that's okay. I can work some darker tones into it later. So I'm just putting a nice dark blue through the top of it. What I don't want to have is, is a naturalistic or realistic looking 
uh, grey coloured dolphin. I want it to be much more dynamic than that. And you'll notice at the top I've already left a white streak. That's because I know that's where the moonlight's going to be hitting later. So there's no point at this stage painting over it because the one colour that is the hardest to achieve on any painting like this is white. So if you're trying to get highlight and you've already painted a darker colour then it's obviously going to be much more difficult than if it is if you're just leaving the actual canvas there. So just back to the fine detail brush now really just to add a little bit more detail in terms of those lovely dark blue colours. I'm just going to work down to the tail. If you want to get those lovely sharp edges guys, what I'm doing here is I'm dragging the brush so I literally have a, a sharp edge with that top end. It's one of the hardest things that people do, that they'll do lots and lots of small lines or try to make it a line accurate. I find if you can drag it in one, you get a much more realistic or just much a much cleaner line to your painting. So again, I just want to try and do this fin in one go. It would just look a bit awkward otherwise if I've got like little bits of bristles or brush strokes just sticking off the edge. And if you make a mistake, you've got a choice. You can either try and erase it with a palette knife or I just tend to actually take the line a slightly bigger just to go over that area um, or that edge that wasn't so sharp. So you're getting to see the contrast in terms of colours already. So you can see how it goes from that lovely magenta and purple into the darker blue at the top. If you don't have contrast in your painting, guys, it just becomes flat. You want this to be a real edge and dynamic quality to your painting. So it's important that you have lots of lights and lots of obviously low lights as well to really bring out that drama. So if I just darken down the fin area just at the top, again, just to exaggerate those darker tones against the highlight. The, the way I paint, or th this style of painting rather, is it's just so much fun because there are literally no rules. Um, you know, I just want to give a sense of a glistening wet dolphin. So I'm going to do lots of different low tones in a moment just to really exaggerate some of those those uh, like highlighted wet areas because you, you don't get the highlight without the low lights around it. So you can see here, I'm just going to add some quite dynamic, uh, almost stylized curves it's really just to show again that the glistening movement of the dolphin. I always find painting like this very therapeutic as well, guys, because you, you're working it in layers and every single layer that you're adding you get more satisfaction from it so it's the idea that you know your painting really only truly comes together at the end and there's just something really quite exciting when you see it start to unfold like this so I actually think it's gone a little bit too dark at the back so I'm just going to lighten some of those blues I do want this character to stand out but if it's all dark I don't think it, I'm going to get the effect that I want and I do want it to be a contrast between those lovely purples and the blues so I'm just going to lighten up some of my blues just slightly just so I can see a bit more quality of the blue colour coming through and then again just going to keep adding on to those the wet marks even though I'm going with a darker colour at the moment you'll see what I mean when this whole thing comes together but I just need to add some of those lower darker tones If you are new to my channel guys I'd really really appreciate a thumbs up and uh, obviously if you're enjoying what you're seeing then do hit that subscription button or subscribe button rather. Um, I do upload videos every week. The idea about this channel is to get people back into painting or people who are just starting out painting some really basic top tips um, and also just to enjoy following along with paintings like this every so often.
Now I'm just going to really focus on getting some of those lovely wet highlight marks. Now you can see those lovely shadow marks and I'm just going to literally go underneath each of the darker lines just to exaggerate those gorgeous wet glistening lines that you get from water. So yeah, you can see now it's just starting to come together. Particularly with those, just the contrast of the light and the dark areas. You'll notice I'm looking over to the right, I obviously have got a reference image. I find it's impossible to do a painting or a drawing without an actual reference. So this is from a photograph that I took. that have had to kind of... I didn't capture the dolphin jumping out the water like this, literally, unfortunately, but I've, I've adapted it just to make it a little bit more dramatic for the painting. Just going to finish off with some, I just want to make the tail a little bit thicker towards the bottom. And then again, some of those little highlighted white areas through. The trouble is when you do paint like this, it, you, the, the hardest thing is knowing when to stop because you get, uh, it's, it's so therapeutic that you, you just want to keep going. Sometimes you've just got to learn when to say enough is enough. I'm just wanting to add a few more highlights though because I do quite like that white. It makes a big difference. And then just to finish off, you wouldn't be jumping out the water without the actual water drops. So with very thick white paint now, just to make sure that you're getting it to stand out against that background. I'm just going to do a few series of dots. So it's like dots and lines. You don't want it to be too patterned. It's got to be a little bit irregular. At the end of the day, it is drops of water so they don't all sort of fall in the same way. Our brains naturally paint in patterns or we see things in patterns. So sometimes it's much more challenging to try and break that pattern. So I just want to have some nice glistening water drops off the edge of his tail. I might take some up into his body as well. And this is really where the painting comes together because you get that sense of it, just of the movement of the, of the energy as this dolphin is jumping out of the ocean. I think I need some a little bit higher up as well. I don't want it to just come from the tail because I think there's going to be an element of that wet coming off the main body as well. So I, I will just start to work up a little bit higher in a moment. Just going to add a little bit more detail here. Again, I'm just working to make sure it doesn't look too patterned because then it just looks like a cartoon. So you're just going to take some lines a little bit higher up his body, or her body. And you can see it just, the whole thing starts to come together now, just with a few water drops. And there you have it, Jumping Dolphin by Moonlight.